Museums dedicated to funerals, mustard, and atomic testing. A man who lives in a 727. A doctor who specializes in hangovers. These are just a few of the unusual attractions you can visit right from your own home on the new show, Wild Travels. If you look hard enough, go off the beaten track far enough, you'll find an America teeming with the unusual, the odd, the downright strange. I'm Will Klinger, and I'm your guide on a package tour we like to call Wild Travels. Joining us now are Will Klinger, host of Wild Travels, and Harvey Marshman, the show's executive producer. Gentlemen, welcome back to Chicago Tonight, which uh, has been, hey. WTTW that is, which has been your... We're back and bigger than ever. And, and, and better than ever. Uh, first of all, for people maybe who are new to Chicago, who weren't familiar with Wild Chicago, uh, re remind people what that show was. Well, it's a show that went off the beaten track to all the bizarre, unusual, interesting places and people all over the city. And now we've just taken that and taken it nationwide, Phil. And how did the show come about, Harvey? Because you had this local template, but uh, going national, uh, what, what was the motivation? Well, you know, we used to do travel shows on Wild Chicago. Once a, once a season, oh, we, wow. we, went right. and we went as far as Tokyo. Uh, we did a show in Las Vegas. We even went to Branson, Missouri, because no one would believe it if we didn't. And then uh, the, it all started at the Wisconsin Dells. So we, we had, uh, you know, we had a, a, an aptitude for doing that. And Will actually uh, put the bee in my bonnet here and said, hey, you know, we'd like to do this again. And that was 10 years after we finished the last show. And that was two years ago, so it took a little while, but well, we're here. You mentioned, Harvey, you mentioned uh, Las Vegas, and one of the places you visit is the Neon Boneyard, and let's take a look at a clip. Las Vegas is bathed in neon light 24-7, as casinos vie to grab the attention of pedestrians and astronauts alike. But what happens when neon signs wear out their welcome? Many will find a retirement home at the Neon Boneyard. And if they're lucky, they might just have a high wattage comeback in their future. Welcome. Hi. Tell us where we are. We are at the Neon Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. Isn't it called the Neon Boneyard? It's the Neon Museum and Boneyard. Signs don't come here to die, and it's definitely not a graveyard. Oh, here's the Sahara. Really a fabulous sign. Really a, kind of one of the stars of the show here at the museum. And yet you can't forget about Ming the Merciless over here. <laughs> this is actually the Coin Castle King. He needed to step away from the buffet, though. Let's be honest. He's got quite a <laughs> gut there. Oh, he's jolly. We date the sign from the 30s. This sign, it just says cocktail, steak, and chicken, but that's all. Keep it simple. All you really, yeah, it's all you really need to know. That's what I really live on is cocktail, steak, and chicken. And that's really you don't really need any. Needs vegetables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, where do you find these places? How do you decide what you're going to focus on? They come from all over the place. We we look at the internet certainly and guidebooks. Uh, we and we have been accumulating this kinds of material for 20 years. I'm an inveterate clipper of odd stories and and so forth. And uh, we have reference books and. There's a lot of material out there, but uh, when, we, when we get to a town, we usually find uh, two or three of the pieces that we had no idea that were there in the first place. So it involves some, uh, some on-site research. Well, Absolutely. listen, to give our viewers a taste of what they'll see on Wild Travels, you've prepared three quiz questions about three unique attractions. So let's take a look at it. Question number one. What large amenity comes with this Wisconsin home? An in-ground Olympic pool? Regulation-sized basketball court? Or a 55-ton boulder in the master bedroom. Don't keep me in suspense. What's the correct Your time's answer? up, Phil. <laughs> okay. It was the 55-ton boulder. It rolled down a hill in 1995 and right into the master bedroom of the Andersons. Luckily, no one was hurt. But it is now turned into sort of a, a, a tourist attraction. You and can we actually just saw the sign. This is rock in the house right. as opposed to, to the house, house and the rock. rock. <laughs> right. Exactly. But this is actually an existing place you can go to, put a little money in a, in a bucket and let yourself in and look at this house that's embedded in the side of this, uh, this rock embedded in the side of a house. And God knows, it's, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> well, you know, they say when given a lemon, make lemonade. All yeah. right, question number two. What has this Springfield man kept in his freezer for four decades? A, his beloved pet turtle. B, wedding cake from King Henry VIII. C, half-eaten celebrity sandwiches. 
What is, in fact, the correct well, answer? Well, that would be C as well. Uh, that would be, uh, <laughs> you can see here, he has half-eaten sandwiches from uh, Tiny Tim, Richard Nixon, Henny Youngman, and several others. And it all started when he was 14 years old. So this is more than 50 years ago. Oh. Uh, he was a Boy Scout, and he had to guard Richard Nixon's lunch when Nixon came through Springfield, Illinois in 1960 campaigning. And he decided after Nixon took a bite and went off to uh, glad hand people that this sandwich might be worth something someday. <laughs> and he has kept it all these years. And he, he was on the Carson show. Yes. And he, he did and Carson. Johnny Carson's people saw the story on the wires. And he went out and did the, sh did the Carson show, where he got a half-eaten sandwich from Carson. Oh, my God. <laughs> but how, how, how do you know that it's Nixon's? You just take his word for it? you got to trust the guy. Mm -hmm. you would know, you lie about that? Uh, I, I don't think I would. No. I don't think I would. <laughs> All right, well, the, the genuineness of our yes, people, it's that's very it. important. <clears throat> right. You, 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 you believe him. Yeah. All absolutely. right. Well, let's go to question three. Okay. What rare historical artifact is kept in Springfield's Illinois Military Museum? Oh, a. I know, I know. The pistol that shot Lincoln. B, an original Gatling gun. C, Mexican General Santa Ana's prosthetic leg. All right. The correct answer is. Come on, I'm come on. I'm going to guess C. I'm going to guess C. If they're playing at home, it's pretty You're much correct. obvious at this point. Oh, gosh, there it is. You're correct. And uh, it's a very odd story, but uh, General Santa Ana was surprised one day by an American, uh, by the Illinois 4th Infantry while he was eating lunch. And he had to get on his horse and gallop away, and he had to leave his leg behind. It was captured, and it has been in that museum since 1922. That is really odd. <laughs> uh, how did he get on his horse, I wonder, if he didn't? Uh, Maybe I, somebody helped him, I assume. I, I would guess, yes. <laughs> okay. But he left his lunch behind, which the soldiers also captured. <laughs> the the half-eaten half 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 taco? Chicken. No, of, no, uh, no, it was chicken. It was, it was chicken? Chicken. Could have right. been a chicken taco. All right. No, no. Well, uh, other favorite places you vir visited for the show, for example, I was uh, looking at your website. One of them is the National Museum of Funeral History. Oh. And there's an odd casket. Yeah. There. Tell me about that casket. Are you talking about the three? The yes. th for, it's yes. a, for a family. It's, there's three, there's space for three people. The, the two parents on one, and the kid in the middle. And, uh, you know, it was custom made. The thing that I thought was kind of funny was that there was a sign that said, this side up. How obvious would it be? There's also a, a segment you're doing about a man who lives in a 727. Tell me about that. That sounds kind Bruce of Bruce Campbell. Yes. Uh, he, he's, he's perched this 727 on the side of a hill in Oregon, in the, in, the, in the middle of these woods, and you climb in on the wing, and you go through the hatch, and he lives there, and you know, no problem with finding a lavatory, two in the front, <laughs> two in the back, you know? So he's got it all planned. How did he get it there? He flew it into a local airport, took the wings off, had a crane uh, bring it up the hill, and, uh, and planted it. He really wanted to live in a 727. He does, and his next project is a 747. Really? He's yes. trading up. Guest house? Yes. Oh, he's trading He's, he's trading yeah. up. That was his starter <laughs> play. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. any, any places that are on your list that you haven't gotten clearance to do yet and you're just itching to do? Can I tell him that? Uh, oh. No. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, we'll just have to keep We'll just have yes, to tune we, in. We will have web extras okay. for some of those pieces which might be just a little too a little wild too edgy. for television. Because, you know, we're, we're not homogenized, Phil. We're, we're raw milk. You know, so sometimes we go over the edge, and we got to pull it back. Before Whoa, we spoil. Know. We, yeah. Right. yeah. And, you know, the raw milk has more nutrition, you know, more substance that is and true. so forth. Uh, again, what is it you enjoy about taking people off the beaten track? I just, I just enjoy the people we meet there and the places we get to see. And, you know, it, and playing off of that is, is the joy of my life. I really, I enjoyed it back doing Wild Chicago. I enjoy it now. And, and to share it with other people, uh, you know, we used to get people coming up to us all the time saying, I, I wouldn't have never have found out about this joint if you hadn't told me. Now I went there last week, you know. So, yeah, that's the joy of it, I guess. Will Klinger, Harvey Marshman, thank you both for being here. We look forward to seeing uh, your new show. You should. I will. And Wild Travels premieres Saturday at 5.30 p.m. on WTTW. You can also catch it Sunday night at 10.35.